Alan, the old mind-body problem uh, keeps haunting us, and some people now say it's solved because we know some neurophysiology. Uh, others say it is impossible to solve because human beings are just incapable of ever uh, understanding the nature of, uh, of consciousness. Um, wh where do you see it? I've spent my life worrying about right. the question of the biology of behavior, the biology of normal and abnormal behavior, and I find it impossible to believe that we won't eventually understand it. But we're at a very early stage. What we have learned is that in all great likelihood, the mind is located within that hard thing on top of your shoulders, probably not in your liver, uh, and that, in fact, the thing we experience as, as mind is the product of the workings at the molecular cellular system level of the stuff that's inside that hard thing on top of your shoulder. When you said in all likelihood, do you mean that, as you said it, in all likelihood it may not be, or was that a euphemism because you didn't want to be particularly uh, blunt and say, I'm sure that there's nothing else besides what's in, what, what, what courses through your cranium? I think it's very easy for people to understand that another person's mind and body are not distinct. It's much more difficult when you ask them about themselves. Okay. That is, I experience my mind as an integrated whole. For me, I have no question in my mind <laughs> that a mind is made up of the parts that constitute your brain and what's going on in your brain and its interaction with your body and the rest of the world. It's not floating around somewhere outside of your body. Having said that, I think we're at such an early stage in our understanding of the workings of the brain and the processes by which the workings of the brain get transduced, converted into conscious experience or mental experience that it's just too soon to be able to explain it, but we know enough. The fact that we can look into the brain of a living, breathing, awake, behaving individual through neuroimaging techniques and watch the mind in action tells us that it's there. The, the problem is will we and when will we come to understand the process that all of that biological activity gets converted into that unified experience called a mind. It's just too soon to answer that, but it doesn't feel like it's too soon to say the traditional mind-body problem is done. Because you really don't have a dichotomy. I don't see where you find the dichotomy. I see that if you stop your brain from working, you don't have a mind working. <laughs> I see that you can observe many, 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 many aspects of mental function by looking into the brain of a behaving, experiencing individual. And I understand enough about biology at all levels that I can conceptualize that it could all work together. I just don't yet have the literal processes. I think those are the ultimate questions of neuroscience. You know, we're fond of saying we've learned more in the last decade about the brain than we've understood in all of recordable history. And I, I do believe that that's true. But having said that and being as proud as I am of being a neuroscientist, I still feel as if we're just at the very beginnings of coming to understand this most complex of all phenomena facing humankind. The question, the ultimate question though, is uh, will we be able to get to the point where you can explain that first person experience, the so-called qualia, that the, the red that I see in your very nice tie is, is the same kind of experience that you say. I know it's the same wavelength, it's a, it has the same impact on your, your, uh, your optic nerve and chase it through the brain stem and, the, and to, to the occipital cortex. We do all that. But the question is whether that experience uh, that, that is, in essence, a non-measurable thing is something that is, a, is an artificial result of everything else or, or has something special to it. I believe that we will ultimately be able to understand those kinds of experiences. But you know, when I was a child, I often thought about the question, if I see something that's red and you see something that's red, do you see my red or do you just label it red? 
And sadly, that's a question we still can't really answer. But I do believe that over time, as we accumulate more and more information, not only about mental processes, but about the biological underpinnings of mental processes, as brain scans allow us to watch what's going on, we'll get answers to those kinds of fundamental questions. Some people will say, though, that you can analyze the frequency that it hits my optic nerve with. You can see the resonance in my optic occipital cortex when I see red and we can have exactly the same resonance but no matter how many correlations you get ad infinitum you will never be able to say that in the first person sense of affirmative independent consciousness that we're seeing the same thing. I have to say that given the pace of technological development over the last century I don't agree. I think that we can't predict where technology is going. None of us would have been able to predict 50 years ago that molecular biology would give us the insights into genetics we've had today. Nobody would have told us that we would have imaging technologies that would allow us to watch your mind operating inside of your brain. I may not be able to describe to you what the technology will be that will eventually allow us to answer that question or even pose that question, but I have full confidence that at the rate at which technology is moving, if not in my lifetime, in my children's lifetime, we will be able to answer the question of what do you see when you see red? <laughs>